Okay, off with another leather project. What I got this time is an inside the waistband holster for a Glock 43. Now I've made inside the waistband holsters for snubbies, for a little J-frame snubby. That's mine, I made this one for myself. It's got the offset strap with a snap on it. And it is made out of nine ounce leather. So, there you go. The gun fits in and you have enough grip exposed that you can get a good hold of it when you draw the gun. It's not, there's not a lot of retention because I don't want there to be a lot of retention. Basically with it in your waistband and a belt pulled across it, it's going to have plenty of retention. Unless you go like um, jogging down the street, standing on your head, it shouldn't be a problem. Now, for the Glock 43, I can basically, just looking at it like this, I can pretty much use the same pattern, but I'll have to change the, uh, the stitch line a little bit and change the, uh, the overall shape of it just a bit. You can see it's, it's, it's a bit too long down here. I don't know if you can see the stitch line, but that stitch line will never fit that trigger guard. So, you know, I can't... I guess if I shove it hard enough, I can push it in there, but I'm not going to. So what I'm doing, I got here a Glock 43 pattern that I'm probably not going to use, but this is for an outside the waistband. And I got my inside the waistband pattern for the snubby. Yeah. Now the way I make patterns is the first thing I do is I fold my construction paper over. Like a lot of people, they'll, they'll start, I've seen people do this and it kind of puzzles me as to why they're doing it. They'll start with something like this and then they'll take the gun and put it in the middle and then they'll go this way and trace it down and then they'll go back over this way and trace it. And it, I guess that's their way and whatever, but for me, the easiest way and the most efficient and accurate way is to just fold it over because you basically want something like this to be pretty much the same from side to side, obviously, except for this strap. So my first step is going to be, oh, it's going to be left-handed too, just to trace this out. Come down here like that. And around here. And basically that's all I need to do because from here I can just use my dividers and set them at the width, width, <laughs> width of the strap, the width of the strip. Yeah, make sure I got that right. And then I could, well, it's the compass here. And then I could just use that to draw a line up following the edge of the paper. And put this back on. Now, since I know his, that this fits the, uh, the fellow's belt right, I'm going to make it the same size and the tip of it is going to be right there. Now from here, I can lay my Glock on it, my dummy gun on it. What I'm going to do Go ahead and trace this on it. And as I stated before, in making patterns, it doesn't really matter if I make the pattern right-handed or left-handed. Well, this kind of a pattern if I don't if I make it right-handed or left-handed, because I can always just flip it over. In fact, on this one. 
if the smooth side is on this side, it's a left hand holster. If the smooth side is on this side, it's a right hand holster. But from here, I can put my dummy gun on it, figure out how much room I'm going to need to get a good grip on it when the gun's drawn, and it's going to be a straight drop. So I tell you what, I'm going to work on this for a little while, and when we come back, we'll see what I come up with. Well, basically, this is what I've come up with, but first of all, I left my mess. <laughs> because when I'm thinking of stuff, I'm grabbing stuff like uh, straight edge. And this is one thing I recommend. If you make your own patterns, get yourself one of these things. I don't remember what it's called, but it's, it's a bendable straight edge, basically. You can bend it into whatever shape you want, put it down, and then trace around it. But as I'm working on stuff, I keep grabbing stuff and grabbing stuff, and eventually my uh, workbench gets right cluttered. For cutting the strap here, I just use my strap in cutter, doink. The same one I use on belts to cut the strap ends. It comes in handy. It's, it's one of those things you don't use all the time, but it's handy when you have it. Knives. I got my stapler here, so once I get this all cut out, I can staple it together and basically make a mock-up of the holster. That just fits in right there. It'll sit about like that. And that gives you enough room to get a good grip on it to draw it out. This is going to be the offset belt loop. And basically, that's it. It's similar, especially across the top here. I left that shape pretty much the same. Let's see if I can do this here. That's pretty much the same there. See? But I did cut this side in about an eighth of an inch because this pattern's for a J-frame snubby. And if you take the J-frame snubby from the top strap to the bottom of the trigger guard on the J-frame is a little bit further apart. And also, the J-frame, of course with the cylinder, is a little bit wider. So take it into consideration the thickness of the leather I'm going to use, which is going to be 9 ounce, 8 to 9 ounce, rather. That'll sit just about right, just about like that. Well, I am going to submit this as a pattern and a mock-up here. And if it's approved, and I'm pretty sure it will be, because the fellow that I made this one for says he wants the same kind of thing, except for a Glock 43. I'll make, uh, I'll start cutting leather. And we'll start working on the holster. We'll see y'all next time.